Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Turk Family Fundamentals webinar series. My name is Danielle Walker, and I'm the Assistant Director of Family Engagement here at the University of Maryland. Uh, for those of you that are new, this webinar series is intended to help you become informed consultants on campus resources so that you can better support your Turk. Uh, today, we're joined by staff in the Department of Resident Life, um, and they are here to discuss housing options for the next academic year, uh, as well as how families can support their Turk as they navigate this process. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit those via the Q&A feature. Uh, to access the Q&A feature, find the two conversation bubbles towards the bottom of your screen uh, or wherever you have your Zoom toolbar. Uh, it should also say Q&A. Uh, if you don't see that, you may need to click the three dots to expand your toolbar. Uh, to help us answer questions that the majority of you have, I ask that you use the upvote option. Uh, within the Q&A feature, if you see a question that you would like to have the answer to as well, uh, instead of typing the same question, please use the thumbs up icon. Uh, this is an upvote and we will, we will be prioritizing those questions uh, when we're uh, in the Q&A portion. Uh, we'll do our best to respond to as many questions as we can before the end of the webinar. And lastly, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, again, the webinar is being recorded uh, and it will be available on the Turk Family YouTube channel uh, later today. Uh, so with that, I will hand off the presentation to my colleagues in Resident Life. Great. Thanks, Danielle. Appreciate it. Hi and welcome. Our Resident Life team is so happy that you've joined us today for the on-campus housing options webinar. My name is Tracy Kirish, she, her pronouns, and I'm the Associate Director for Assignments, Communications, and Technology Services. My colleagues and I are excited to share the myriad of housing options available in our residence halls and the affiliated Commons and Courtyards Public-Private Partnership Apartments to help you make a more informed decision about housing for next year. Let's get started with um, by in introducing today's presenters. My name is Glenn Smith. I'm the Assistant Director for Assignments and Occupancy Management. Hi there, I am Linda Dye. I am a public inquiry coordinator here in the Office of Assignments and Public Inquiry. Hi folks, my name is Jennifer Lindstrom. I'm the manager for housing partnerships. So I oversee the leasing process for, for South Campus Commons and the courtyards, and as well as the off-campus housing services office. Thanks everyone. Now let's get a sense of who's in our audience today. If you'll just take a quick moment to complete the poll so we can see if we've got students or families, um, et cetera. Okay, we'll give another couple seconds. It is great to see so many family members and students here for this session. I'd like to give you a glimpse of what we will be covering today. We have a lot of material. Danny, if you wanna advance the slide. We have a lot of uh, material today to ensure you and your TURP know your on-campus housing options and our process timeline. The, um, you see a list of the topics that we'll be covering today. If you don't see something that you are most interested in learning about, no worries. We will hold additional webinars in the coming months about off-campus housing options, room selection process details, residence hall move out, and more. Before we jump into um, the details of this session, I have a couple of reminders for you. Our team recognizes that there are many conversations happening right now about housing for the next academic year. The most important thing to note is you have time. You have time. There is no need to rush into securing housing now and signing off-campus leases. It's important that you first do your research, understand the wide variety of housing styles and options available to you, right here in the residence halls and in the affiliated public-private partnership apartments. Participating in this webinar is a great step to understanding some of these options. I'd also like to talk about our four-year housing plan. 
We want every University of Maryland student to live on campus with us their first year and return to the residence halls for their second year. The Maryland Residential Experience allows students to be in the center of where they need to be and provides 24 support to both students and families. There are resources and activities within footsteps of where students live and opportunities to, to ensure a smooth transition and a successful college experience. Student, Danny, you can advance. Students in their third and fourth years who are looking for more independent living um, with full year leases will have priority access to affiliated public-private partnership apartments at South Campus Commons and the courtyards. Or they may wish to access our um, off-campus housing database to search all of the local options available to them. The bottom line is for families, if your student is a rising sophomore, they really should consider staying on campus for their um, sophomore year as it opens more opportunities the following year. There are lots of options to explore and we hope that you'll um, find what you're looking for right here on campus. So let's jump in um, so you have a sense of what we have to offer. Danny, I think we're having some sound issues. Let me try to play it while I'm unmuted. Was that working? No, okay. I may have not had my sound shared. And if we can't get it to play, that's okay. We can, um, we have this video on our website and it will be released when we open up the on-campus housing, residence hall, housing and dining agreement um, come November 13th. Yeah, it's not giving me the option right now. I think I would have to stop sharing and then reshare. That's okay. Okay, I'll go to the next slide. Okay, I think that is uh, on me now. So um, living in our residence halls offers a unique experience um, of engaging and living with people who are different than yourself uh, and provides an opportunity to learn about yourself and of course others. Our on-campus residents represent the culturally rich and diverse university we call home with students hailing from 42 states, Washington DC and 48 different countries. The Department of Resident Life provides housing options for students during their undergraduate experience. Um, first and second year students who meet the priority deadlines uh, are guaranteed on-campus housing. So it's really important that you make sure that your student is paying attention to deadlines and meets them. Um, students entering their junior and senior years, as Tracy had said, uh, have priority access to our capstone properties, that is the South Campus Commons and the courtyards. Um, Off-campus housing, uh, the Off-campus Housing Services Office also offers support and services for students who are searching for alternative housing options. And uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so our residence halls, we have 39 residence halls, seven communities, um, our public-private partnerships, in court, uh, which are, as, again, South Campus Commons and Courtyards. Um, there is no live-on requirement uh, for freshmen or any other students, but 62% of first-year students choose to return to their, for their second year. Uh, so a lot of sophomores find uh, on-campus living to be appealing for a second year. Uh, next slide, please. 
So the Maryland residential experience uh, provides complete access to the university um, and pos positions students to be more fully immersed in the Terrapin community um, with all of the support that we provide. And our, uh, I guess, phrase or our tagline is it's all about the facts. And FACT stands for friendships and connections, academic success, convenience and cost, 24-7 support, and student development. Um, Danielle, I, I think we lost the, the slides. Yes, I was trying to uh, share to YouTube um, and it took my screen away. Hold on just a second. Oh dear. There we go. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Okay. Well, next slide. Okay. Um, so North Campus is where a lot of students who are um, new to housing are living this year. So you might be familiar with it. Um, students who live on this side of campus live in pro uh, close proximity to the recreation center. That would be Epley, uh, the football and basketball stadiums. That would be um, Maryland Field and Xfinity. Um, so four room selection for North Campus. Uh, students can form groups of four, and they'll be able to select semi-suites in Oakland Hall uh, if those are available. Uh, there are also a limited selection of new traditional double with bath in Oakland Hall that may be available for selection for groups of two. Um, and for groups of two that find that they enjoy living on North Campus, they like the close proximity to Epley, they like near being near the stadiums in Clarice. Um, there will be traditional double rooms located in Denton, Ellicott, Heritage, and Cambridge, all four of the North Campus communities. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, South Campus. So we don't have any specific area of campus that is for one type of student. South Campus has North Hill, South Hill, and Leonardtown. Um, you might have a student living in uh, one of the South Campus communities right now as a freshman. Um, a lot of them would be located in North Hill, which are our traditional low rises. Um, but we also have the South Hill community. So the South Hill community is primarily suites and apartments. Uh, the Leonard Town community is entirely apartments. Uh, so the apartments are really appealing to students who wish to cook their own meals um, or not have a dining plan so they can have other dining options. Um, in the North Hill community, uh, Prince Frederick Hall will be only available to the living and learning programs that are assigned there. Um, but uh, students looking for single rooms will find a lot of options in Wacomico, Carroll, and Caroline Halls, uh, which are all singles. Um, and Carroll Hall is also our substance-free residence hall. Next slide. Okay. Um, so students can shop in group sizes up to six. That will allow them to see apartments and suites. Um, so that group of six. Groups of four will be able to see semi-suites, some apartments, and some suites. So there are units that have four residents. There are units that have six residents. Um, the difference between a suite and apartment, and this is the important thing, is apartments have kitchens. That is how they are divided. Um, all suites and apartments have at least one bathroom shared just by the residents of that unit. So you'd be sharing the bathroom with three to five other students. Um, Semi-suites, uh, which for students who are not in the uh, living and learning programs located in Prince Frederick Hall, uh, on North Campus in Oakland Hall, uh, have two double rooms that have a bathroom in between them. So it's kind of like a Jack and Jill uh, bathroom. Next slide. So if you want to see more of our spaces, um, have a better idea, we do have 360 virtual room tours available on our website. Uh, you can, they allow you to jump directly into the room and spin around and see it. Uh, the apartments and suites have multiple angles um, and you can kind of walk through the whole apartment. Uh, next slide. 
and kind of the important part that usually gets left for last but is no less important, uh, housing rates. Uh, currently, what you would find on our website is our 23 to 24 rates, um, but those may change. We expect to have our next year's housing fees up on our website in, uh, in the late spring. Next slide. Okay, and so here is another chart, and I just want to give you a quick explanation of this. Obviously, um, it's hard to read if you're not familiar with it, um, but basically we have a differentiated housing rate. So per each student, this is the cost for the entire academic year, so fall and spring, because when you fill out the application, you're applying for the whole year. So you can see the different types of housing, traditional without AC, traditional with AC, etc. Um, those are the housing types, and then room type, single, double, quad, triple, those indicate how many people are sharing a bedroom. So a quad does not mean a semi-suite. Those are not the same thing, and sometimes people get confused with that. A quad is a four-person room. So that is a kind of quick rundown of the things we have available on campus. Uh, and now I think I'm handing it over to Jenny, right? Indeed you are. Hi folks. Um, so South Campus Commons and the Courtyards are public-private partnerships. Um, they're a, a partnership between MEDCO, which is a university of, or sorry, a state of Maryland uh, development company. They're managed by a private management company called South uh, capstone on campus management and resident life has staff in South Campus Commons serving as a community director, resident directors, and resident assistants. Uh, the resident assistants and resident directors in the courtyards are actually employed by directly by capstone on campus management, um, and the RAs all receive the same training. Uh, these these two properties were initially uh, devised to provide housing to for upperclassmen, um, junior rising juniors and rising seniors who um, don't always have uh, priority for on campus housing. Next. So the courtyards at UMD is on the north side of campus, just real close to the Xfinity Center. Um, these are garden style apartments. Um, they have a nice uh, amount of amenities um, and most most apartments have balconies or patios. Um, it's a really lovely community. Um, students who have leases at the courtyards also uh, have free parking on the property. So if your student has a, a car, uh, they can park for free on the courtyards property. Um, if they wanna park on campus, however, they would need a campus permit. South Campus Commons is not surprisingly on South Campus. Um, it's kind of nestled amongst our South Campus residence halls. Um, this is a much more tr traditional style apartment with um, hallways and elevators and things like that. It's close to uh, downtown College Park, as well as many of the academic buildings. And this is a very popular, um, uh, popular community for students. Um, something to note is that the application for South Campus Commons in the courtyards is for both properties. So when students participate in apartment selection, they can select from either property. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, commons and courtyards um, came into fruition um, to allow more housing for on-campus rising juniors and seniors. Um, so they get first and second priority in making their selection. Um, let's see. And they're also the only groups that are eligible to be pulled in by current residents. Um, we are very strict with the priority order when it comes to apartment selection in South Campus Commons in the courtyards. Um, to be eligible, a student must be in good standing judicially and academically. Um, they also must be registered for the spring. Um, so uh, we, we get a lot of questions from folks um, who have students that are starting, like say for fall 24. Um, those students are not eligible to participate in apartment selection. However, um, there's often students who sign leases during apartment selection and then aren't able to keep the lease. Um, so many transfer students end up taking over leases uh, from students who selected during apartment selection. Um, 
So we make the selection, students get appointments based on their priority. Um, appointments are random. Um, so it doesn't matter when the stu student applies, as long as they apply by the deadline, which is February 8th, the leasing application will open on November 13th. So anyone who applies between November 13th and February 8th will keep their priority. So as you can see in the chart, um, if a student is living on campus and in their third or fourth semester in the spring, um, they're in that first priority group. However, anyone who misses the deadline, the February 8th uh, deadline, I believe it's at four o'clock, um, will lose their priority. So it's really important that students um, apply during that time. Um, the application is mostly filled out for them based on other applications they've done. Um, so it's really quick to complete, um, which is why we don't accept any excuses um, if students miss deadlines. Um, something to note, and we get a lot of questions about this, um, if a student moves off campus for spring, even if they lived on campus in the fall, um, they would be in the last priority group, which is for off-campus students, including fraternity and sorority residents, um, since fraternities and sororities are not part of the residence life system. Um, however, if a student is uh, studying abroad in the spring and lived on campus in the fall, we treat them as if they're currently living on campus. Next slide. Um, this is just a quick comparison um, from last year of um, rents. Uh, as you can see, the courtyards is the, probably the most affordable property in College Park, one of the most affordable in College Park. Um, and then South Campus Commons is also very affordable compared to other off-campus properties. Um, so that's something, one of the reasons that these uh, properties are popular. Um, I like to give a little plug for courtyards because Commons typically has a lot more um, attention. Uh, courtyards is a very affordable property. It also has much bigger rooms um, and more amenities on the property. I think the only thing that isn't appealing to students around about courtyards is the location. However, they have a um, shuttle bus, a university run shuttle that comes to campus. And like I mentioned earlier, they have free parking in their property as well. Next slide. That's And that's all I have for commons and courtyards. Uh, we'll actually be um, doing a number of um, information sessions specifically about South Campus Commons in the courtyards um, starting in November. And I'm going to put a website um, in the chat um, so you know where to go to find more information about timelines and things like that for South Campus Commons. And there will also be tours. So um, we'll be doing in-person and virtual information sessions if you want to learn more about South Campus Commons in the courtyards. But if you have a student who is a rising, who is a current freshman going into their sophomore year, we highly recommend that they stay on campus for another year. Thanks, Jenny. We are so happy in Resident Life that students are interested in staying on for another semester, for another academic year. Um, and if you want to return for another year, you first must apply. So the housing agreement will be available starting November 13th. You don't have to apply then, but if you know you want to return to campus, that's when you can start that process. Um, unlike your freshman year where you were placed in a specific assignment, now as a returning student, you will be able to choose your space. It is a live process. It is a virtual process. So you will be able to go online and choose a space for yourself or your group of friends. Again, November 13th, the housing, the housing agreement will be available on the housing portal. Next slide. And students can form groups from sizes two through six. They can also select as an individual. Students who are in living learning programs will be able to uh, select within their program if, if their uh, program is more than a one year program. Um, the restrictions apply so only students in the living learning programs can return. Um, Non-program students will not be able to uh, uh, be on a living learning program floor, even if they are right now. Uh, we also have mixed gender groups. So if students have uh, uh, different genders and they want to live together, there will be options in our apartments, in our suites, in our semi-suites. Next slide. So again, the most important step is that you have to apply. You can log on to the portal with your directory ID and password, complete the residence hall housing and dining agreement. Um, some of the things that you may want to consider after you apply is that 
you know, what's your, what is your specific situation? Do you want to live with your friends? Do you want to, uh, we have apartments and suites that will hold up to six students. Um, are you interested in, in a particular style of housing? Do you want to now cook your meals so the apartment is more appealing to you? Um, do you want to have less students sharing a bathroom? So maybe a semi-suite where four students are sharing one bathroom might be appealing to you. Do you want to live close to the residence halls or your classes? These are some of the things that you want to consider, um, but you have plenty of time where you won't start selecting rooms until March. Um, you do have to apply by the February 26th deadline, however, at 4 p.m. So please make your decision by then. Um, once, once the deadline occur, uh, closes down, then the application will be placed on a wait list. So apply before the deadline. And again, you can start as early as November 13th. Next slide. So where does parents and, and families fit into this process? Um, you may wanna start exploring some of these questions uh, with, your, with your students. Um, what is the most important thing to you? Is it living uh, in, in, on campus where you're closer to activities and classes? Um, is there a specific type of housing that you want? Do you like the, tra the traditional style or you want to continue that process? Um, how many roommates do you want? And let's, let's uh, understand the difference between a roommate, which is could be two students in a double room versus a housemate, which is in an apartment on campus would be maybe six students sharing uh, a, a, a space or it could be off campus. Um, how would they get their meals? Do they wanna have an apartment? Do they wanna to continue to eat in the dining halls? Um, how would they get to campus uh, for, for classes if they're living off campus? What is their plan as far as break housing is, is concerned? If you're living in a residence halls, um, only certain parts of campus are, is available for, for break housing. South Campus, La Plata, the Heritage Community. So if you're living on campus, um, you may be more than, that may be a part of your decision making. Um, and then I'll go ahead and pass it over back to Jenny to, to talk further about this process. All right, so it's really important to talk about um, just to have a conversation with your student about what they're hoping to do. Um, in my experience with off campus housing, particularly, um, students tend to be distracted by shiny things and there's a lot of shiny things off campus right now. Um, so really having a, a deeper conversation is important, um, you know, thinking about where their classes are. Are they going to want to cook for themselves or go to the, the um, dining hall? Um, where are their friends living? One of the biggest things, I think, on both ends of the spectrum, whether it's commons and courtyards or um, residence halls, is to think about who they want to live with. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of more students lately who are coming into the processes um, as singles. Um, I, I don't have any data on whether or not that increases or decreases chances as far as commons and courtyards is concerned. Um, but typically, if they have at least one other person to live with, I think that does open up some other options. Um, for instance, with South Campus Commons, when they go into apartment selection, um, you know, if a, a, a group of two can go into a vacant two-bedroom apartment, a, a three-bedroom apartment with two vacancies, or a four-bedroom apartment with two vacancies. Um, so, and if for some reason they're not seeing what they need, they could still break up the group um, and go individually. So really um, working with your student about thinking about who they want to live with and encouraging them to live with, with somebody that you know, I think is a great thing to do. Um, I think both uh, for commons and courtyards as well as on-campus housing, we're looking at doing more roommate mixers to help with this as well. Um, I think the budget is really, is getting more and more important to look, to look at. Um, there's quite a range um, between residence halls and off-campus uh, housing of what your budget or what uh, the costs are. Um, when you're considering a lot of students, the only thing they think about is like that base cost. So usually rent, um, but different properties um, will charge for different utilities um, and different um, levels of service, let's say. Um, in South Campus Commons and in the courtyards, just like in the residence halls, everything is included. Um, so for that, 
that's a little bit e easier budget um, calculation to make because you're just looking at your rent. Uh, but we know not everyone will have a chance to live in or will want to live in um, our properties. Um, so really considering the budget, um, asking the questions, um, ask lots of questions when you're going into this. That's what we're all here for. Um, if for, for any reason you're choosing to live off campus or um, or need to live off campus for any reason, ask a lot of questions to the property. Um, make sure that you completely understand what's what you're getting into um, with that. Um, in South Campus Commons, in the courtyards as well as off-campus properties, those are basically full year leases. Um, they're all, I think, about 11 and a half months technically. Um, but if you choose to renew for the same bedroom, you stay throughout um, that in-between time in that half, that two weeks um, in the middle. Um, so that's something to think about too, you know, is um, are you going to want to move for two weeks um, and things like that. Um, let's see, I think that's covers it as far as the questions, but I think just having a meaningful conversation with what's important about what's important needs versus wants is also a good conversation to have. Um, and then coming up with a few different options. Um, like I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. I mentioned it in the in the Q and A. Um, for the last three years in South Campus Commons, we have not had enough spaces um, in Commons to um, for all the juniors who are interested to make a selection. That said, there's still vacancies in the courtyard. So when students are applying for Commons and courtyards, they're applying. The application covers both properties. So typically, there are enough vacancies at least for the rising juniors to select in one of the properties. Um, but if a student is really set on South Campus Commons, um, I really would encourage you to have a second option um, available because um, there's a likelihood that um, most of the students that apply won't be able to select in South Campus Commons. Next slide. That's um, me, Jenny. That's you? That's okay. me. So uh, family members, take out your phones. The next two slides are for you to take pictures. These are the all important uh, deadlines that you do not want to miss. So again, the, the Commons and Courtyards leasing application is available on the 13th, as is the residence hall application. So both applications are available. Um, as we mentioned before, rising juniors have priority for the one and rising sophomores have priority for the other. So that should help you decide which one you should choose, but they're both available. Um, and then the deadline to apply for the residence halls is February 26th. Uh, same thing for the deadline for the Commons and Courtyards lease signing. So again, those two processes mirror, mirror each other. For the on-campus housing, um, you would then select your space between March 4th and 11th. So applications are available the 13th, and then the residence hall application closes on the 26th, 4 p.m. Please do not miss that deadline. Take a picture. Next slide. Likewise, take a picture of this as well. When you have questions come up, um, we're here to help. Um, there'll be information on our website that will contain information about the room selection process. We're here Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. Uh, 4.30 p.m. So give us a call in our office or send us an email and we will respond as soon as we are as, as we can. But take a picture of these resources that are available to you. And now we'll bring Tracy back, who's going to talk about a great program we have coming up uh, later this month. We are really excited to share, Danny, if you could advance, please. We are really excited to share a new opportunity for our current um, residence hall students to come and explore the various options they have available to them in South Campus. So we are having the South Campus Live-In um, Housing Fair next Friday, October 27th from 2 to 5 p.m. And students will have an opportunity to tour um, suites, apartments, and other options in South Campus. They'll learn all about the amenities that we have available um, because what we've learned from students, particularly those who are new to campus and living on North Campus, is that they're not aware that we have um, 
different options of housing on campus, including semi-suites, suites, and apartments. So they'll have a chance to actually see those spaces on October 27th. So we invite you to share that information. And if you're a student here, please check it out. I have a, a couple of other reminders that I wanna make really clear. There are so many resources available for students to learn about their options. Um, coming, you know, in late um, fall and early spring, there will be several information sessions for students to attend so that they can understand the um, public-private partnership leasing, what the priorities are, um, what that process looks like. Students should attend that. We will also have roommate mixers for students to get to know other um, TERPs if they're looking for potential roommates. Um, we'll have info sessions. Our assignments team is always available to answer questions. So we need students engaged in this process and taking advantage of the opportunities that will um, present themselves. Additionally, um, there were a couple of questions in the chat about delaying submitting your um, residence hall housing and dining agreement. Um, you can apply anytime between November 13th and February 26th at 4 p.m. For students who miss that deadline, it is likely they will be placed on the housing wait list um, because we prioritize housing, um, residence hall housing for returning rising sophomores and incoming freshmen. Um, and we know the spaces that are available for those students. So I encourage students, if you are still exploring options, that's okay, but submit that housing agreement so that you are in the game for residence hall housing. Um, if you choose to explore commons and courtyards or other options available to you and you're no longer interested in residence hall housing, you can cancel that agreement or simply not participate in room selection and we will cancel your agreement for you. Um, but returning students have until April 1st, 2024 to cancel their residence hall housing without penalty. So the bottom line, submit the agreement so you're in the game and can participate in room selection. Next slide. So again, the deadline to submit is February 26th at 4 p.m. And we will move into questions at this time. And I'll jump in here. I saw in the chat a few questions about students who are studying abroad. So if you are studying abroad for spring 2024, you can still apply now uh, starting November 13th. If you're a rising sophomore, it still guarantees you housing the following year if you meet the deadline students who are taking study abroad in the fall semester and want to return to spring 2025, again, you can apply for spring only housing start in October of 2024. As, was there any other questions that stood out in the chat? Yes, I do have some questions here, um, and study abroad was one of them. So thank you for taking that on ahead of time. Um, a question that came up a lot uh, was, is there any advantage to submitting the application earlier rather than later? No advantage as far as priority to a specific room or to get housing, but the peace of mind knowing that you your housing is set for next year, that would be the benefit of uh, applying as soon as you're ready to. Thank you. Uh, must a student purchase a dining plan uh, if they choose to live on campus? When completing your housing agreement, you must select a dining plan. If you then during room selection choose an apartment, you can go back and either cancel that dining plan or uh, get a commuter, a cheaper commuter dining plan. And to follow up on that, so for the students who were in uh, South Campus Commons and the courtyards, uh, would they be considered, uh, or should they consider the commuting dining plan, or would they be able to uh, select a resident dining plan? 
they would select the commuting dining, dining plan. For most, for all intents and purposes, South Campus Commons and the courtyards is considered off campus, mainly because um, the installment payments are not paid through the university. They're paid directly to the proper to the property management company. Thank you. Um, and uh, there was one question that came in since we're on the topic. Uh, can you share more about the difference between a resident dining plan and a commuter dining plan? Um, is there anyone on here that has like a good response to that? I know for me, it's just there's different options. There's not as much like anytime dining. Um, there's more dollars that are available for the commuting versus the resident. Um, but that's as much as I know about the differences between the two. I would just add that for any questions about dining plans, the best resource is going to their website, which is dining.umd.edu. Up on top of that page is a list of all the various plans that they offer, um, and then you can choose which best suits for you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we get this question every year. Um, can you share, so you spoke about the substance-free uh, housing in Caroline Hall. Um, can you share what you mean by that? Uh, because there's co some confusion on if all residence halls are supposed to be substance-free, what does it mean for Caroline Hall to be substance-free and why is that one kind of separated out? Sure, so we have dedicated Carroll Hall as our substance-free building. Carroll Hall is all singles, um, so students who choose to, to live in that particular type of housing are, are stating that we're planning not to use substance, substances in the halls, and, and nor do we plan on using substances and coming returning back to the halls um, influenced. So uh, you're choosing that particular type, type of housing when you choose a substance-free environment. So just to clarify, um, Yes, campus is substance free, but uh, Carroll Hall is for students who um, choose to live a substance free lifestyle. So not engaging in that uh, activity uh, off campus as well. Um, the next question, uh, if a student doesn't have desired roommates, can they pick a single room and have other single students assigned to their unit or do they need to uh, find a roommate? Great question. So if you have you have a number of options, if you can select a space in a traditional hall, a suite, semi-suite, or an apartment as an individual, you can choose a single room or a double room within a suite or semi-suite or a traditional hall or a semi-suite or an apartment. Um, or you can take advantage of the roommate finder that will open up on in January and choose a roommate that way. Thank you. Um, there are some questions about a uh, room selection. Uh, we will do a room selection webinar uh, in the spring as well. Um, Glenn, is there anything you want to share, uh, I guess, quickly about the room selection process right now? They will be, be able to start forming groups in January. And we'll have lots of information, emails, uh, and like, as you mentioned, webinars um, coming up. Um, shortly. Um, and then the process is that they'll be choosing their spaces between March 4th and March, from March 4th through March 11th. Thank you. Uh, what else do I have on here? Um, and then, uh, Tracy, you mentioned this, um, but just to make sure we have it uh, during this time as well, um, if a student fills out the uh, residence hall housing and dining agreement, uh, they're not bound to stay on campus, correct? Um, they won't be penalized or uh, lose any deposits? That is correct. There is no deposit when submitting the returning um, residence hall housing and dining agreement. Um, that is only for new incoming first-year students, which is a $50 non-refundable fee. Returning students, there is no fee. Um, and you can cancel that agreement without penalty by April 1st, 2024. Um, however, if you miss the February 26th deadline, then um, it is likely 
students will be placed on the wait list and will only receive an opportunity for residence hall housing after we've been able to accommodate um, rising sophomores and first year students. So best to keep your options open, submit your agreement so that it's, um, you can actually have an opportunity to participate in room selection. Thank you. Um, and this was asked a lot. Uh, can a student submit applications for both South Campus Commons and Courtyards as well as on-campus housing? So they can. Um, they will actually have a little grace period. So if they go uh, try to get into Commons and Courtyards and are not successful, they'll still have a, little, a couple more days to still apply for the uh, residence halls. But it's certainly uh, it's to their benefit if they want to apply for both and they do get into the commons and courtyards, then we'll automatically cancel their residence hall application. So it doesn't hurt to apply for both if, if that's what they want to do. Thank you. Uh, for commons and courtyards, there is um, another question, or this question came through a lot. Um, are the leases uh, nine month leases or do the students all have to have 12 month leases? Um, and if it is a 12 month lease requirement, uh, can they sublease if they have an opportunity elsewhere? So um, the leases for South Campus Commons and the courtyards are 11 and a half month leases. Um, there's a turn period um, between the beginning or the end of a lease term um, and the beginning of the next one. If someone uh, does not want to live there for the full lease term, um, then they would have to find somebody to take over their lease through the lease transfer process. And that's where they find another eligible student to take over the remainder of their lease. Thank you. Um, when it comes to priority, uh, are AP credits considered when determining priority? Um, so one example is a student is a first year but came in with multiple credits, whether AP or from a community college. Um, would they be considered a junior for housing selection or would they still be considered a first year student? Credits, academic credits are not part of the eligibility process. It's the number of, of, camp, of number of semesters that you lived on campus and number of semesters that you've been in, at, at a university. So if you lived on campus for two semesters, you're considered a rising sophomore. Thank you. Uh, are there any housing options that are pet friendly? Not in the residence hall. Not in South Campus Commons, only um, emotional support and um, uh, service animals. Service animals, thank you. There might, I know off campus, th there might be some differences in off campus properties. That would vary, that would be an individual thing for each one. Thank you. Um, can students choose to return to the same residence hall or the same room that they're currently in? I was going to mention that one too. That came up a lot. So mm -hmm. for the residence halls, um, students, the, the, it will be a, a blank slate. Like no one can return to their immediately return to their unit. What students can do is when it's, when it's their time to select a space, and their current room is still available, they at that time they can select it. There are some restric restrictions that apply. If you are not in a living learning program, but currently are in a living learning program floor, mm -hmm. you will not be able to return. My next question, uh, can students from different classes uh, or different years live in the same apartment or suite? So maybe an incoming student plus a rising senior for the residence halls, uh, yes, it doesn't matter um, what year you are, it matters if you're eligible. So if you've been confirmed, you've been guaranteed housing, um, and everyone in the group has been guaranteed housing, they will be able to select. If a, for example, a senior is not eligible to, to do room selection, they would not be able to join uh, the, the sophomores group, as an example. Thank you. 
Uh, those are the questions that I have saved for the presenters. Were there any questions that came through um, that you want to touch on? I'll also go back through and look at some of the Q and A's to see um, if there's any that I can pull. I'll go ahead and kind of answer for commons and courtyards the question that was asked about students from different years. Um, I mentioned it or it was on the slide about eligibility and priority. Um, so if there's basically five priority groups, um, yeah, if you could go back to that, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, basically, a student in a, we'll say, later priority group where their appointment time is later. So like say an off-campus student um, could not join an on-campus rising junior at their appointment because they would basically be skipping ahead of the fourth and the third and the second priority. However, if um, they really want to live together somewhere in commons or courtyards, the person in the first priority could join the person in the fifth priority in their at their appointment time. Um, so they would, that would be something they'd really have to think about because they would be giving up a chance, their chances to, for selection. However, typically in the last few years, we've had vacancies in courtyards um, when we've gotten to the third and fifth priority, third, fourth, fifth priority group. So there is the opportunity to live together. However, um, earlier priority groups would have to give up their priority basically. I'm still looking through some of them. Um, so for students who may need housing accommodations, um, how do they provide those um, to resident life? So if you already have an, an approved accommodation, that sticks with you as long as you live in the residence halls. You don't have to reapply or do anything uh, different. If you have not applied for a housing accommodation, you should do so, I would say, as soon as possible with our ADS uh, office. And um, they will, once they approve that request, they will uh, let us know what the student's accommodation is. And then we will, re we will reach out to the student. I think it's important to note that if you have an accommodation, um, but you choose to next year, you choose to, to live with your friends and not with your accommodation, um, there may be a, 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 a you, if you change your mind and, and then you need that accommodation, there may be just a delay in, in getting getting back to that accommodation. We'll still honor it, but it may, depending on when you ask us, it may take take a little while. Thank you. Um, Jenny, I think you touched on this. Um, can you uh, share again the uh, parking for South Campus Commons and courtyards? Uh, parking uh, is just university parking. Uh, I think a lot of uh, students in Commons get parking passes for the, da, 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 what is the garage there? Uh, Moat Lane Garage. Mm -hmm. Um, in the courtyards on the property, students um, can park for free. They just have to register their license plate with the office. Um, however, if they want to park on campus, they would have to get a, a commuter uh, pass, which is likely to put them not very close to things. <laughs> not much closer than courtyards already is. So um, in that case, I would just recommend using um, either um, a bike or take the bus to campus. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go forward to the um, South Campus Living option. 
um, there was a comment that the QR code wasn't working. So um, there's also this go link here, go.umd.edu forward slash South Campus Live-In. Um, and uh, you should be able to pull it up that way. Um, but I'll make sure that information is shared in the follow-up email that I send as well. Um, Thank you, Danny. I appreciate that. Oh. And I just want to emphasize this particular program is for our current residence hall students. So we encourage families to share this information with their TERPs, encourage them to come out, but we will not be hosting tours during this time for um, family members, only students. Thank you. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, we're coming up on time um, for the presenters. Um, are there any last minute questions um, that you want to uh, respond to um, before I wrap things up? Um, yeah, I just wanna reiterate that um, we will be having Commons and Courtyard specific information sessions for students, uh, both uh, in person and online, um, starting, I believe, November 12th, I think is our first one. Um, I'm going to put a website in, can't talk and type at the same time. Uh, I'm going to put a website in the chat um, that will take you to that information. Great, thank you. Um, and Jenny, I'll uh, reach out to you and see if we can get a, a family webinar together as well, um, just so families can have the information that students have and they can discuss together. Um, okay, uh, so uh, I will stay on um, for a little bit if any of the uh, panelists want to go through and try and answer any of these uh, last minute questions um, that are in the uh, Q&A. Uh, but I do want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Uh, contact information for the Department of Resident and Life is here on this last slide. Um, so if you have any questions, please uh, visit their website. There's a contact us page where you can get their information um, as well. Uh, as I bring this webinar to a close, I do want to remind everyone that uh, a recording of this webinar will be available on the Turk Family YouTube channel. Um, it should be up there later this afternoon, um, if not at least tomorrow morning. Uh, and you'll also receive an email uh, with a link to the recording and a survey. Uh, so please let us know how we did, how we can improve on future webinars. Uh, and if there's other topics that you're interested in, please let me know. I'm happy to connect with those offices uh, to bring that information to you. Um, we welcome your thoughts uh, for sure. Uh, thank you again for spending some time with us this afternoon, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.